All right, uh, here, folks, we have actual paternity gels. I say gels because this is not from one uh, um, particular paternity case or investigation. This is five different ones put together for educational purposes, but they are from actual paternity gels, paternity investigations. First, let's look at these, uh, this, uh, this lane right here. And, uh, boy, there's another one like it right there. There's another one like it there, there, and there. What are these lanes? These must be what? The standard lanes with a standard mix. All right, so what do we have in lane number one? We have a lane for the mother, a lane for the child, and a lane for the father. And so let's see if this alleged father could be the real father. I see, uh, I see mother, mother right here. I see child, child. And I see alleged father, alleged father. Could this guy be the real father? Not hardly. There would have to be one right here, right? Uh, what's the basic principle again? Between the real mother and the real father, all bands, DNA bands in the child's lane must be accounted for. So this one uh, matches the mother, but this one does not match the, any of the bands from the alleged father. So, uh, alleged father number one, you're out of here. Get lost, fella. All right, what do we have here in the second case? We have mother, mother, child, child, alleged father, alleged father. Could this be the real father? No, indeed. Why not? Well, this, uh, this band from the child's lane matches the mother. Uh, and But this one over here, this other band from the child's lane, there's no match from the father. So, this guy's out of there as well. All right, what about uh, alleged father number three? Okay, we have, let's see, what do we have? We got mother, mother, child, child, alleged father, alleged father. Oh, my goodness. Could this guy be the real father? Sure he could. Sure he could, because here's the child's lane. This man matches the one in the mother's lane. This man matches the one in the father's lane. Now, is he definitely the real father based on these few little lines here? No, there'd have to be a whole bunch of other gels match and uh, statistics and all that kind of stuff. But this guy's at least on the hot seat, right? Certainly is. What about this uh, fourth one here? All right, we have mother, mother, <coughs> uh, child, child, alleged father, alleged father. Could this be the real father? Yes, he could. Why is that? Well, here's the child's lane again, and here's a band matched by the mother, and here's the other child band, and it's matched by the alleged father. So this guy's on the hot seat as well. Last one. Uh, mother, mother, child, child, alleged father, alleged father. What about this guy? Oh, he's on the hot seat as well. My, 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 my. Three out of five. Three out of five. Now, let's look at this. What have I got here? I have an actual DNA parentage test report. And the, uh, the uh, thing, you know, we've got some uh, names crossed out for some reason, blacked out. I can't imagine why, sure. Well, what's the probability of paternity down here? 99.999%. Is that a pretty high probability? I think so. I think so. In fact, is if a judge has this in his or her hand, and is looking down at the young man uh, that uh, is uh, a you know, the alleged father, uh, should that young man, if he's confronted with this type of evidence, hire a lawyer and fight this? Is this controversial? Not a bit. What will the judge say to the young fella? Son, get out that wallet and keep it out for a long, long, long time. Uh, interesting how I got this uh, particular uh, uh, DNA parentage test report. I got it from a student, uh, actually a lady that uh, was, uh, uh, well, she was the mother. And uh, so uh, she was probably, I don't know, 40, 45 years old, maybe, you know, somewhere in the mid-40s, maybe. And uh, uh, early in the uh, semester, she happened to mention that she, uh, I think it was the fall semester, she uh, mentioned that she had two sons, one about 20, one about 25, as I recall. And she said, uh, you know, the older one was doing her proud, and the younger one's having a little trouble growing up. But uh, a little later on in the semester, maybe about halfway through the semester, she said, guess what, Professor Vesey? Next spring, I think she said maybe March, uh, or maybe April, but let's say April. She said, uh, uh, next April, 
I'm expecting my first two grandchildren. And uh, I said, oh, amazing. Your two sons are both having their first child the same month. She said, uh, no, um, uh, the younger son, two different girls. So, uh, so this was one of them. She said, you'll probably see us on the, uh, what's that show? Um, oh, I forgot the name of the show where they do uh, have crazy stuff like this. Uh, anyway, uh, she seemed to have a uh, pretty good attitude about it. Uh, maybe she screamed when she was other places, but she seemed to uh, think that, she seemed to indicate that she thought it was her son's problem, not hers, and it certainly was. So anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's getting off topic here. Again, uh, back to... Uh, Back to paternity gels. Uh, uh, what's the basic principle we have here again? In the child, the child will have a certain number of bands, and between the real mother and the real father, who wouldn't be this one, all bands in the child's lane should be accounted for, as they are over here. Here's the child between the real mother and, well, I don't know if this is the real father or not, but he could be. Between the real mother and the real father, all bands in the child's lane should be accounted for. All right, that's it.